Hi guys, welcome back to Bella's Big Adventures. My name's Sue and today we're on part two of our Welsh trip. And when I say we, I mean Doug and I. We have been travelling around North Wales and we are on Anglesey at the minute. We're at a little CL called Brambles Farm. And today we're going to go round anti-clockwise onto Anglesey and hopefully see some beaches and some lighthouses. So stay tuned, see how we get on. See you later. First things first, I need to empty the wastewater and I haven't got any uh, pipes. Obviously in our van we have some collapsed pipes. Undo the tap. Yeah, while that's emptying, I'll just quickly show you the site. There's not a lot to it. It is literally five individual service pitchers. Uh, they've all got water, waste and separate bins and they've got electricity but it is metered. So it costs £25 for the night um, and then you, your electricity is 33 pence per unit. We had it on all night and we haven't used that many so yeah, pretty good. Uh, it's quiet, you can hear a little bit of road noise in the distance now but we couldn't hear it last night. It's quite peaceful, as I say it is a farm but we haven't been bothered, there's only one more caravan here. And you book online and it sort of sorts it all for you. That is just the wastewater running and not peeing against the van, right? <laughs> anyway, I better stop it before it overflows. So this is us leaving Bramble's Farm CL. Nice and peaceful. Little narrow lane to entry and exit, but not too bad. It's only 75 meters. Big waves. Just passed through Aberthaw, possibly pronounced wrong, but that's where we are. That is the name of the beach there. Actually, sea foam blowing around. <laughs> oh, big wave! <laughs> <laughs> you can see all the foam that's blown up from the wind and the crashing waves. It's everywhere. It looks like somebody's had a foam party. This mountain of seaweed. Quite a lot of seabirds here. There's curlews, sandpipers, oyster catchers. Doug's just found a really old oyster shell. That would have been a big oyster, that. <laughs> this is a fabulous rock pooling beach. <laughs> well worth a little visit.
there is an RAF base on Anglesey, so you do get quite a lot of jets. Doug and I are just picking up litter at the minute. Just a small fraction of what's on the actual beach, but you know, every little helps. If we'd had a bag, we could have picked up more stuff. Some of it's obviously blown over from ships and things. There's a couple of rubber gloves that look like fishermen's, but a lot of it is just rubbish that's blown about and it's just not good for the wildlife. So, right, well, we have found the rubbish in the bin. There is a bin at the end of the car park. I've got sand in my eyes. Um, and we're now going to sample our flask of tea that we made today. We actually remembered. And a little bit of a Welsh cake, because, you know, we are in Wales and everything. So, Doug and I are just sampling the wares. in the Oyster Catcher restaurant near Ross Niger, uh, watching the RAF um, jets touch and go landing on these big picture windows. It's amazing. If you're still there tomorrow morning, somebody else will take £7.50 off you on the way out. Okay, bye. That cool. been there, it's one that's done that's been there since Thursday today. Tuesday. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. I can't remember one day after the other, but I'm glad they got a day off. No, no, they got. Thank you. Bye. bye. are parked up at Penmon Lighthouse at the moment. It's blowing a bit of hooli <laughs> and pouring with rain. We were hoping to see the bioluminescence. I'm not even sure you can do it at this time of the year, but uh, we thought we'd hang on and see if the rain stops. If it carries on being this windy, we're probably going to have to move. It's £7.50 to get up the toll road now. It used to be free to park years ago, um, but it's a privately owned road. So it's £7.50, which takes you up till midnight. Um, and then in the morning, when you go back down, uh, they'll charge you another £7.50. There are signs everywhere now at the entrance saying no camping, no caravans, no horses and coaches or anything like that. Um, so in theory, you're not supposed to overnight park. But the guy at the gate took the £7.50 and said, if you're still here in the morning, it'll be another £7.50. <laughs> I mean, it is November, so maybe they're a little bit more lenient. I mean, there has always been parking in the car park here overnight and they do charge you in both directions. There's no services. There is a little cafe opposite, which was just closing when we arrived. We didn't get here until about five o'clock um, and it was already almost dark. So we didn't see the sunset or anything. If the weather improves, we may stay and um, try and catch the sunrise in the morning. If it doesn't improve, we're gonna move on. There is a, a car park sort of air next to Beaumaris Castle. Uh, so if it's really rough, we might move there because we might get a better night's sleep. Morning guys, it is Friday morning. We are at Penmon Lighthouse. The wind, as you can probably tell by the van rocking, <laughs> is quite rough. We didn't get much sleep. 
Um, Doug's just gone out to look at the sunrise. It's not really sunrise, it's more of a light rise because it's blowing a hooli, it's clouded over and yeah, really windy and wet. Not the best weather, but anyway, we're gonna um, pack up in a minute and go over to Beaumaris, um, try and find some breakfast get some milk because we're running out and have a little look around there. The town as we drove through yesterday looked really nice so we're going to have a look at that even if it is wet and windy we can go in some shops to get out of the rain and then we're going to head back in towards Snowdonia I think find a campsite so we can do proper showering and washing and all that kind of stuff um, yeah. so I'll speak to you later. Maris Castle. It's a walled city. It's quite early so we're going to go and try and find some breakfast. Well, Welsh is close to Portuguese. Welsh. Spanish. Oh, bolio. Bolio. <laughs> Pity over pudding. <laughs> we're going to pop in here. So it turns out Bomaris has lots of little crafty shops. As you can see, we've already purchased a few things. Lovely little shops they are, sort of independent suppliers. So it's worth coming and doing a spot of shopping. Mermaid cottage sign, isn't that cute? I'm having to step away from the shops now because there's too many fabulous things to buy. Food, drink, gifts. <laughs> so I'm going to have a look at the pier instead. I figured that can't cost me a lot of money, hey? Eh? <laughs> but look at this setting. I know there's a car park, but look at the hills behind. How amazing are they? Turns out Beaumaris is a beautiful village. Town, whatever it's called. Yeah, really pretty. It's like a seaside town mixed with, it's a bit like St Ives, you know, arty and well maintained, very pretty, very clean and tidy. So you can get onto the pier, but you have to walk around the RNLI section at this time of year. So, you've got to walk past the lifeboat. To the tyres, <laughs> get them to the sand.
at our pitch for tonight. We're on a farm, it's on quite a busy road in fairness, but um, yeah, we're parked quite close to the road, <laughs> but it was a last minute thing. But we have driven through some amazing scenery to get here. But then there is this view. How amazing is that? I think it's called Dogram or something like that. I'll put the name on the screen because I always forget what they're called. Hardly anybody here, right next to a river, really um, well positioned for walking in Snowdonia. But look at that, the sun's just come out. The owners live in the farm over there. You have to email them to get a booking. That's the toilet block. There's washing up, bins, grey waste, black waste, hot and cold showers, male and female toilets. As you can see, it's a bright, sunny and frosty morning. Extra sunny. But look at that view. Yeah, it's the first day we've had that's been a really hard, crispy frost. Um, down where we live, we've only really had a mild grass frost so far. But it is almost December, so we've done really well. But today, it's proper glittery frost on the grass. Yeah, so the first job is to obviously defrost the van, uh, rid of the rubbish, and then we're going to go to Betsy Coyd. It, it was quite a peaceful night considering there's quite a busy road going by, by as you can hear. Um, the toilet block here is quite basic, there's lots of hot water for the showers, but the actual shower block is not heated. So at this time of the year it's a little bit chilly, but hey, it's worth it to wake up to that. You can see that ice melting on the top of the door. Little fronds of ice. Right, I'll go and get the rubbish done. Some teas and coffees to be had. Wow, look at them.
Morning guys, well it's going home day today. We have just packed up the van and we are to give it a little clean out and we are heading back to where we hired it near Manchester and uh, yeah emptying the water out and then we've got about an hour's drive before we drop her off. She's a fabulous van if you fancy hiring her um, Brown Bird Company, um, Lisa Griffiths is running the company and she's a lovely lady so it's worth um, checking that out. So Brown Bird Company on their website you can book it um, yeah. and this one is called Cat Bells. They also have one called Blencathra so well worth hiring from their lovely people. So yeah time to go home so if you have watched and enjoyed please do give me a little thumbs up and I want to say a big thank you because um, yesterday I actually reached my 2000th subscriber so if that was you thank you very much and thank you to all the others that have already subscribed thanks for watching see you next time